My name is Bruce Cooper. I am research assistant here at Shelby County Museum and Archives, located in Columbia and Alabama. I would like to introduce to you a new project that we are now publishing. It's called the Datcher Collection. And first of all, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the program and how it came to be. About three years ago, uh, our director, Jennifer Mayer, challenged me to come up with some form of searchable database that would tell the story of enslaved people here in Shelby County, Alabama prior to 1865. With the help of Falcon scholars from the University of Montevallo and other volunteers, we compiled this database. The sources for this information come from three main sources. The first one is estate files uh, that go back to the early 1800s. We have loose court case files that involve court cases here in Shelby County, uh, also early 1800s, and will books. Uh, this information, again, was taken from original documents here at the museum. Um, our goal is to enable those people in our population who are searching for their ancestors but were unable to go back prior to emancipation in 1865. It is titled the Peter Datcher Collection because uh, this gentleman has searched for years to find his ancestors. Uh, he has searched here at the library and many other, other places. Hopefully the index that we have created will help those who want to search for their ancestors accomplish this goal. So first of all, let's talk about uh, the program itself. This is our, our program. The way we access it is that we go to shelbycountyhistory.com. It comes up with this page. If you will, if you want to search our archives, if you'll come scroll down to the bottom right, all the way down, click on research our archives. Then we come up to another page that shows the different sections of our collection. Again, if you'll come all the way down to the bottom right, you'll see a tab that says Special Collections. If you'll click on that tab, that will bring you up to the Datcher Collection. Again, this tells a short history of this collection and also of the resources available. At the bottom, we're gonna access that collection. So we're gonna click on Access the Collection and we're gonna come up with three tabs. And these tabs are will book indexes, uh, probate case index, and also loose record index. Let's go to the will books first of all. Again, all three of these sources are here in our museum in our original documents. So let's access the will book index. And we're gonna come up uh, with a database that allows us to search name, location, plantation, uh, the owner of the plantation, many different ways. So let's look at the top and let's look at some of the icons and how we can best use them. At the top, we have a magnifying glass. Of course, that is a symbol for search. So this is where we're gonna do our search. The next ones involve, we can, after we found the search, this will tell you how many times this name that you have searched appears in the wheel book document. Over here, if it's a little difficult to see, we can increase the font. We can come over here and make it full screen. Uh, we can also uh, open a particular file or we can also say current view. Let's click on the current view and you'll notice that it comes up to a full screen. And this gives us our headings. We decided to assign headings that were searchable. In the upper left, we have the source. In this case, it gives the wheel books. Um, it gives the book number. It gives the page number in the book. It also gives the date of this particular record. The next title is the owner's surname. Then we have the given name of the owner. Then we have the enslaved person's name. On occasion, we were also given the age of that person. When we had that, it appears here. Then we have the gender, male, female, child, boy, girl. And then we also have their other uh, columns. This one is appraisal. Many times in the estate or the will books, it was uh, conducted an inventory of the person's estate. And on occasion, values were placed. Here is the value that was placed on the appraisal. 
if this enslaved person was then sold, we have a column that shows what the uh, uh, enslaved person was sold for. Then we also tried our best to find out the new owners of the enslaved person so that we could also make that searchable. The last, we have notes. Many times in the document, special notation was given to the description of the person uh, or an ailment that might have suffered. So here we have notes. So let's go to the top and let's click on search. And now let's see how many times that, for example, the name Lucy might appear in a collection. And at the top, we're just gonna type in the name Lucy and we're gonna hit enter. And it tells us that Lucy appears in the will documents. We have 58 times that the name Lucy appears. Uh, Lucy's name is also going to be highlighted in uh, the sheet, the Excel sheet, and we can scroll and go to the next one, and we, we can continue through. Uh, we can also search this for owner, date, uh, age, many different ways this is a searchable index. Uh, hopefully, uh, this type of search will help you in finding your ancestors. If you want copies of the specific document, we can help you there. This will not lead you to the document. This is an index, once again. The documents are housed here. We can even make copies, mail them, email them, or if you want to, you're more than welcome to come in and look at the document, hold it, and see the document for yourself. If we can be any, of any further assistance, please call us. Hopefully this will help you in your search.